Am I the asshole for getting upset with my husband after he told me nothing will change while I'm pregnant? So me, 26 female, and my husband, 28 male, who I'll call Jake for this story, have been together for 5 years and married for 3. We have recently started trying for a baby as we both felt like that was the next step in our life together. And 3 weeks ago, I got a positive test back. We were really, really happy and told our families and now my mom and mother-in-law want to throw a big baby shower for us. It was just super good news all around. Well, two nights ago, me and Jake were getting ready for bed when he reminds me to go through the house and make sure all the lights are off. Now, he can be a little lazy at times, and it has become a nightly routine for me to make sure all the lights are off that he leaves on before we go to bed. I wasn't feeling very well and asked if he could just do it since he wasn't doing anything, and he was literally standing by the door. He then tells me, no, this is what is expected of you every night. I was just a little hurt, but I didn't want to fight with him, so I just didn't. When I came back, Jake goes on this very long and unprovoked rant, saying things like, just because you are pregnant does not mean anything will change. And you are still expected to cook, clean, and do all the chores. I started yelling, and I said that, I wish I would have known this is how you felt before I got pregnant with your baby. There was a moment of silence before he started crying, and he left for the night to stay at his mother's house. What a bitch. He hasn't been back yet, and my mother-in-law and sister-in-law have called me berating me and saying I broke Jake's heart with what I said, and I need to apologize immediately. And until I do, he isn't coming home. I don't know how to feel. So, am I the asshole for yelling at my husband after he said he isn't helping me with anything during the pregnancy because it's a mother's job to deal with it? Like, oh, this is making me mad. This is making me mad. Ew, I've never gotten this upset over a story. That's so fucking, like, that behavior is just disgusting. Am I the asshole for not thinking the joke my family played on my girlfriend was a big deal? I, 25 male, have a girlfriend, 23 female, who is absolutely beautiful but she does have a large facial scar. My family often jokes about it. They have a super dark sense of humor. It bothers my girlfriend and she says it doesn't feel like a joke. It feels like she's being insulted under the pretense of it being dark humor. Even though I explain it's just how they are and they don't mean any harm, she doesn't really want to be around them. I told her it was really important to me we spend Christmas with my family. We would all quarantine first and test and it was important to me. She resisted at first, but after some urging from me, she gave in. She said I absolutely could not excuse their behavior if they made a rude comment about her though. We got there and it was fine for a while. Then my mom and my sister broke out their matching ugly sweaters that had my girlfriend's face all over it. They both laughed, saying my mom made them screen printed and it was just a joke. My dad thought it was hilarious. I even chuckled a little because she's really beautiful. So it was ironic they put her on an ugly sweater. My girlfriend looked at me and when I said they were just being ironic, she shook her head, got up and left. Didn't say anything to anyone, just took her car and left. The whole time my mom is upset because it was just a joke and she didn't realize my girlfriend was going to overreact like this. I told her that a warning would have been nice. But my sister agreed it was just a joke and my girlfriend was being a baby about it. I had another fight with my girlfriend when I finally got home and she said I was an asshole for putting her in that situation. She said I let them treat her badly and was trying to make it her fault when it was my family who was acting badly. I said it was just a joke and that she was overreacting. She asked how it was supposed to be a joke. I said that was just their sense of humor. I said I was sorry she was offended by the joke but she ruined the whole day with her reaction. She said that no. Them realizing she wasn't going to take their bullshit anymore ruined the day. We aren't speaking currently. I don't really think I've done anything though. I didn't know they were going to do that. And really, it was just a joke and I think she's overreacting. Am I really the asshole here? He's like, it's ironic. She's beautiful. What if she doesn't think she's beautiful, right? Story time about the best thing I saw while working in a restaurant. We've got a veteran who comes in on the regular named Hank. Hank lost his leg and hand in Iraq. When seeing this, people will often pick up his tab when he's in here, but he never feels like it's deserved, so he tries to lay low. He wears long pants to cover his prosthetic leg and doesn't wear anything to show off his veteran status. He doesn't like attention and it's clear he doesn't feel special treatment is deserved. So, obviously, we shut down because of COVID. We reopened when our state did, but after a week of indoor dining, the owner decided to go back to delivery and take out for everyone's safety. Thankfully, business is still booming. I don't know the specific of Hank's situation, but I think he lost his job sometime during the shutdown. Before COVID, we'd see him at least once a month, but this was the first time we'd seen him since we reopened. To make matters worse, he would easily put away six tacos or a whole chicken plus sides and plenty of beer when he'd come in, but this time he just ordered a small burrito and a water. He didn't mention the different order though, just said how excited he was to come through again and looking forward to it all week. We put in his order while I went to go get him paid up. However, his car declined. I started to tell him, but he could see it on the screen and went, shit. Shame and panic washed over his face as I tried running it again and again when he gave me another card that declined. Meanwhile, it was the height of lunch rush and the line was getting longer, 
so people were peering to see what was taking so long. After running Hank's cards a few times, all of his cards declined. He started saying, hey, you know what? Did you actually make the thing yet? But then the bag came out with his name unmistakably on it. He started digging around his pockets for cash and came up with 525. The meal was $7. I told him, don't worry about it. You'll get us next time. Knowing how embarrassed he got when people tried to cover him for a good reason, being a veteran, and not wanting to pile on by being for that I was covering him for a not so great reason. Hard times. However, he wasn't entertaining the idea of taking food without paying it in full. Finally, without making eye contact with us, he said, no, no, it's okay. I'm just going to go uh, to my place and get some more cash. However, I knew that look on his face and the tone in his voice. There was no more to go get. It's a look and tone I've used myself and seen from others more times than I wish I had. I wanted to insist he take the food, but I wasn't sure which was worse. To force food on him and risk damaging his dignity or to let him save face but go without the lunch he's been looking so forward to. Before I could decide, the girl behind him who had been texting for most of our transaction had just begun to tune in and caught the last bit. She asked, hey, what's the difference on what he owes? I said, two bucks. She went in her purse and handed it right to me. Hank started to try and hand it back to her, telling her it wasn't necessary, but she cut him off. She cut him off by saying, no, 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 it's two dollars. We've all been there. Enjoy your lunch. As he finally gave in and went to put her money on the counter, she noticed his prosthetic hand. She did a double take and said, actually, no, you know what? Let me get the whole thing. Give him his money back. Then went in her purse and got the rest. He tried to stop her from doing it, but she replied, listen, I hope I'm not being presumptuous, but you're a veteran, right? He nodded. Yeah, that's what I thought. I served two hours in Afghanistan. There's a guy walking around on false legs out there who's the reason I'm walking around at all. So please allow me to do this and don't think twice about it. I tell you to just get anything you want off the menu if times weren't so tight for me right now too. At this point, an older guy with a bow tie came up and announced, I couldn't help but over here. Put both their tabs on me, get them anything they want, and then get them some more. Thank you both for your service. Hank was getting pretty emotional at this point, but even still, they both started to vigorously protest to the man that he didn't need to do that because it was their job and they both signed up for it. Bowtie guy wouldn't hear it. He must have had his own story because he got red in the face and blinked back tears but stayed silent. He left his credit card with me and went back to his spot in line. That's when another guy stepped up to the register. Part two of the best thing I saw while working in a restaurant. This guy handed me his card as well and said, yeah, I'm going to split that tab. So really, guys, go wild. You're American heroes. They both empathetically told him, no, they're not heroes. But this guy cut him off saying, oh, please, I get overwhelmed playing Call of Duty. You're heroes and I'm glad to thank you for it. So they started ordering and the girl knew just what she wanted. Hank asked how much our steak and rice platter special would cost. Older bow dude called him not to tell him the prices and get him whatever he wants. He came up and said, son, no one can put a price on your sacrifice. Call of Duty guy splitting the tab chimed in. The meat that we're giving you is a lot less valuable than the meat you gave up for us. His friend elbowed him to shut up, horrified, but he got a belly laugh out of Hank. Throughout this, no one noticed not only had a Hank lost his hand but also his leg. His pants covered and he's got too much honor to bring it up. By now, the kitchen got a whiff of what was happening and loaded them up real good. This lady was so moved that she paid for old man bow tie and Call of Duty's meals. It was a domino effect. The owner was so disturbed that two veterans had struggled to pay for their meals. He instituted a military gets the special free day of the week even though we've been hemorrhaging money since the pandemic closures and keeping the doors open on a week-to-week -week basis. Hank told all of his veteran friends and they've been coming in with their families. It's been great for business. family who is extremely homophobic ended up kicking me out and replacing me with my best friend. My family is absolutely awful when it comes to topics about the LGBTQ plus community. Literally any mention of it and they get extremely upset. Which sounds like they're suppressing something to me, but I had a friend that we can call Katie and my family absolutely adored her. Every Christmas they would buy her presents. She would spend family movie night with us and they honestly treated her like she was the favorite daughter. So one day I made the decision to come out and I decided to talk to Katie about it. She was literally so supportive and so respectful that I gained the confidence to talk to my family about it. Bad idea. Hell striked and they immediately kicked me out of the house. 
So I found myself on a schedule of switching from couch to couch at different friends' houses. One particular night that was really hard for me, I decided to go visit them. I was missing them and also hopeful that they might accept me back in. And as I approached the house, my best friend was over there. She was playing games and doing family movie night with them. And so I decided to knock on the door. I burst into tears and went off on all of them. The absolute audacity. Later, my best friend texted me saying that she had a secret. Follow my Insta. Part two to my homophobic family kicking me out of the house and replacing me with my best friend. So I cannot believe the audacity of my family literally replacing me with Katie. Not only was she just over there for movie night, but they had actually moved her into my room, the room that I was raised in. I felt so much fury that I had to walk around the neighborhood for a while just to calm down. But eventually I just started to walk back to the house that I was staying at. Once I got in, Katie messaged me. She apologized for being such a bad friend, but then she said she had a secret. And she came out to me as bisexual and begged me not to tell my family. She felt like my family was her own and she didn't want to get kicked out. I was so frustrated that she was keeping the same secret that I had in my house, but she's getting to actually stay at my house. It has been a full year now and she is still with them to this day. But thankfully, I'm now living with my boyfriend and his family has accepted me as bisexual. I am honestly so much happier and better off. If you guys have a story that you'd like to share, follow me and DM me on Instagram. Story time about how my crazy friend told me that she's attracted to me and I eventually had to block her. And yeah, she's a girl. And yes, this is my own story time. Oh yeah, and by the way, my makeup collab with Our Natural dropped today, so please click the link in my bio. I am so proud of it and it is super affordable makeup. So back in 2016, I was living in LA by myself. I was pretty much on set every single week and I auditioned almost every day. So I was meeting tons of people and actors at that time. And I was making lots of friends. During one of these auditions, I met this girl, let's call her Jess. Jess was super cute and funny and she made me laugh a lot. After the audition, she asked me if I wanted to share an Uber with her, which I thought was really sweet. But when we got into the Uber, she was asking me so many questions. Like, this girl wanted to know everything about me. Finally, we exchanged phone numbers, and when I got home, she sent me a text. She asked me to go out with her and her friends. I had so much work the next day, I told her no. That's when she calls me really angry, telling me that I need to live my life. You'll never guess what she said. Part 2 is up. Part 2 of how my friend told me she was attracted to me and I eventually had to block her. If you haven't heard, I dropped my first makeup collab today with Our Natural. Please click the link in my bio to shop. It's super affordable makeup and I'm so proud of it. So she calls me on the phone after I told her I didn't want to go out. And she starts yelling at me. She says that I needed to live my life. Then she said, give me your address. I'm coming over right now to pick you up. That's when I was honest with her and I told her that she's putting a lot of pressure on me and that I barely even know her. Then she kind of backed off because she heard my tone of voice. And she told me that she was a very intuitive person that she could tell that I was holding something back. I told her we could hang out that weekend and she said fine. Then she proceeded to text me every single day. Really thought we were building a friendship so we talked about a lot of stuff. And I was finally happy to have a real girlfriend. At least I thought. Finally the weekend comes around. But I get my period. My periods are pretty bad so I told her that I wouldn't be able to go out. Again she calls me super angry. She said I needed to man up and basically take D-R-U-G-S. Like the green stuff. I sort of laughed on the phone and this made her even more angry. That's when she hung up. But then she calls me right back. Part 3 is up. Part 3 of how my crazy friend told me she was attracted to me and eventually I had to block her. By the way, the blue pigment is from my collab with Our Natural, so please go click the link in my auto shop. Super affordable. So after she hung up on me, she calls me right back. That's when I told her that she was being really strange and I just didn't like it. She apologized and begged me to come out. Finally, I said yes because she was just being so annoying. So I go out with her and her friends for a few hours. Then I literally had to beg her to let me go home. Throughout the night, she kept holding my hand and kissing it. Another two weeks passed by and we just kept texting, but I definitely knew that I was not going to go out with her again. But of course she invites me out again. That's when I told her that I didn't really think our friendship would work out. 30 minutes later she tells me to look out my window. Yep, she showed up to my apartment. Then she told me that I was confused, as in I didn't know if I liked men or women. I told her I definitely liked guys. She told me she just wanted to take me out on one date. I asked her how she found out where I lived, and she said she followed me from the Uber that first time. I blocked her and ran inside, haven't spoken to her since. Story time of how I caught my teacher and my